So one of the areas in Design Center that we really wanted to improve and pay attention to was the utilization of sensors in a project. And that's something we've always done very well is uh, the use, usefulness of motion sensors and door contacts in conjunction with the lighting control system. Very powerful. But what has not been as easy as it should have been is the graphical manipulation and placement of those sensors and visibility overall for sensors in a project. So what we've done in DC-30 is exactly that, added that capability. So let me show you how. So we're starting with the blank project here. We've just built uh, several rooms and floors. And let's say that in his closet in the master suite, uh, we wanted to have a regular keypad and we wanted to have a uh, motion sensor off of that in order to trigger the lights on and off. So I'm just going to hit Control K, which is going to add a keypad to this. And I'm going to add to the back of this keypad on the aux contact a sensor in that closet. Okay? So I go to my auxiliary tab on the keypad and I go to, say, for example, input 9 and I choose motion sensor. Now, with that motion sensor, a couple of things just happened. I don't know if you can see this, but in the very top of that screen where this is that keypad, there is now a brand new uh, icon denoting the use that there is a sensor attached to that. So it's graphically different than other keypads. For example, if I hit Control K again, notice the difference between those two. So if I go to my back to my keypad in that master closet and I wanted to work with that motion sensor, I can now, for example, go to my drop down list and choose a list of sensors. These are vantage based sensors, so these will put them into your bill of materials and order them for you instead of having to do the old route, which was, well, I knew I wanted them, and you just went through the ordering wizard, and you uh, placed them in the ordering wizard, but the, the project had no recollection, no uh, rec record of the fact that you had put those in the project. If you don't want to work with a Vantage part number for that, then you can uh, simply just uh, choose dry contact and provide your own. If you want one of the Vantage motion sensors, pick the model. Uh, of course, to go through the normal process of normally open, normally closed, go through and choose your task or create your task, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one way that we've made that uh, more visible is through the keypad. Now, I don't know if you can see over here, we also have an area drop down list. So in this case, I was in the ma main floor, master suite, closet one, which is hers. Now, notice uh, that I have in the top filter here a dry contact uh, filter, so the motion sensor is now there. So I have my keypad, I have the motion sensor, and it's graphically visible and available as its own property inside of the uh, you know, master closet number one, which is really nice, uh, really easy to use. Uh, let's say, for example, now maybe we aren't uh, adding a motion sensor per keypad. Let's say we're going to add a motion sensor into the mechanical room, no, a contact input station for motion sensors into the mechanical room to do the rest of the house. So what I would do is I would go to my station's wire link and I'm going to take a DIN contact input station, drag it into the mechanical room, and now here's my uh, 10 contacts that come with each of those. So what do I do now? Because I can't take this contact and drag it to the closets in the second floor. So you notice bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three each have their closets. Let's say we're going to put motion sensors in those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that contact, go to the area, uh, find it. Here it is, closet one. And I'm going to now specify whether or not this is a, a vantage motion sensor or a typical dry contact or uh, your own third-party contact, whatever it is you want to use, uh, change it to normally closed, etc. And of course from here um, I have the ability to right-click, start the task wizard, edit a new task, or select an existing task. Uh, if I go to that uh, first closet now, you see that that motion sensor is there. I can give it a name. So let's say in this case we'll call this closet one motion sensor. Um, and that, the nice thing about that is uh, I'm able to see by room as well as with keypads or loads and motion sensors the elements that are in there. So let's, let's quickly add a load in there. Let's call this closet one lights. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to program that contact. 
So what I'm going to do is, is uh, go down into the mechanical room to that first closet, uh, motion sensor, right click, go to task wizard, and I'm going to pick my uh, command in here for managing the uh, specific uh, motion sensor. So in that room, so I can pick motion sensor, loads, pick the closet load, pick the level you want it to go to, what's the ramp time, what's the fade time, the return delay, that's how long it will be on until it stops sensing motion and then it will turn off after that amount of time. So if you're in the closet and you leave, 10 seconds later it will turn off. Uh, you can give it an LED query uh, and then of course a name and uh, we'll call this just closet one motion sensor and voila. So the programming and all of that we just did has always been there but what is new is the ability to assign a motion sensor again to an area just like we did here uh, a little bit ago and the programming for that and the visibility uh, inside of the uh, area view is brand new. The programming has been there uh, since the beginning and that sensors uh, inside of Design Center. Now we do have a new report uh, that we have added to the uh, reports list. You can click on sensors, run it, and it will pop up and add you uh, the new sensors list. And those are the exciting new features inside of DC3O regarding sensors. Happy programming!